In this lesson, we're going to look at turning our server into a fully functioning domain controller to control our, a domain name. Now, what we're going to need to do is have a couple things preset. I highly recommend having the name of your computer already set, as well as a static IP address already set. We've done that here in previous lessons. So what I'm going to need to do now is, once I've logged in, the server manager opens up. And if it isn't open, you can always click on the server manager down here in the corner, and it will open up. On a server, there are several different roles that you can apply to the server to turn it into a, basically a more functioning server. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on the Add Roles. And the first role that we're going to want to add, let's go ahead and click Next here, is the Active Directory Domain Services. And this is the typical role. Let's go ahead and click Add Required Features. This is the typical role that's going to make it so that we're in charge of a Windows domain for an entire network. And so this is the most common one that's going to be selected and installed, Active Directory Domain Services. This is the only role I want to select at this time. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next and next and then we're going to go ahead and install it here. It's going to take just only a moment to install and now you can see here that it has installed successfully. You may get a warning that says the Windows update is not up and that's just I haven't turned my Windows updating on right at the moment but it does have a installation succeeded label here so we do have that completed. What I need to do now is now that I have the actual tools here, I'm going to need to promote my computer to a fully functioning domain controller. And we're going to have to run what's called the DC Promo. And you can see you can click on this link right here and it will actually launch it. Or, I'm going to go ahead and hit close on both of these. You can type it into the start menu and type in DC Promo here. And that'll go ahead and allow you to click it from here as well. Either way, it's going to take us to this exact same location. So here's my wizard to run the actual promotion of a domain controller. I'm going to go ahead and hit next and I'm going to go ahead and hit next again. This is the first con domain controller in my entire domain and so what we're going to need to do is create a new domain and a new forest. And so I'm going to go ahead and select this option and we're going to go ahead and hit next. Now for the domain name we're going to just pick up a name that doesn't exist and so what I'm going to do is just actually type in my last name here and then add dot local to the end of it. And so that's just going to tell us it's a localized domain. It's not a .com or a .gov or a .edu or a .net. It's basically a .local. I'm going to use this just so that we can reference and kind of understand that it's not going to be out there on the web. If you do have a domain name that's pointing towards uh, your IP address or your server, then that you could definitely do the .com or something similar to that. But for this purpose, I'm just going to use my last name, .local and we're going to go ahead and hit next. Now it's going to ask me what functional level do I want to have. What you're going to want to do here is pick the oldest server that's in your domain. And since this is the first domain controller that we have, our first server, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the latest and greatest of the release too. However, if you do have multiple servers running on your network and you have a couple older ones, you're going to want to pick uh, up to the oldest one that you have on there. But I'm going to go ahead and hit next on this one and it's going to ask us here if we want to install the DNS server and this is going to install the DNS role on our computer. This is where our domain name is going to come in and we do want to have that checked and, and have that running here on my computer. The global catalog has also been checked. It's already highlighted. This is going to allow us to have all of our settings stored here on our computer for our entire domain so we're going to go ahead and leave that there as well. I'm just going to go ahead and hit next and it's going to tell us it cannot find a DNS server. That's okay. We're just going to go ahead and hit yes for that. This is the default location, so it's going to store information. Um, you'll see it's store the database and log files. They're going to store these on different locations on our computer. I'm going to go ahead and hit next on that. And then I have to type in a password for this account. And this is going to be a password to be able to access some of this information. And now one of the things to notice is that it's different than from the administrator account that's on your computer. So you're going to want to put a password in here. That's a password you won't forget. And I'm going to go ahead and type in my password for this now. And uh, if, in case we ever need to access these files, we're going to go ahead and hit next on this. And we've got a summary. I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. If you place a checkbox in the reboot on completion, it's going to automatically reboot. And so the next time we come back here, after this is installed, it's going to go ahead and restart my computer. And we're going to be prompted here at the login screen. After the computer reboots, we're going to be presented here with a login screen. And one thing I want to point out that's different is you're going to notice that it's going to start with your domain name 
backslash the user account, which is going to be administrator. We're now logging in with the domain user accounts rather than the local administrator account or the local accounts that are located on the local machine. If you do want to actually use one of those local accounts for whatever reason, you would have to type in the name of your computer itself backslash the user account. And so we're going to go ahead and log in now using the domain administrator account. And it's going to have the same password we set it up with earlier. So I'm going to type that password in. And we're going to go ahead and hit the go button there. And now that my computer has logged in, the server manager has opened up. And you can see that I've got two roles installed on my computer, the Active Directory Domain Services and the DNS Server. Both roles were installed on my computer. If I click on the server manager up here, you're going to see that the name of my computer has now been changed slightly. It's not just SRV-1, it's now SRV-1 dot, and then the domain name comes after it. You can see that I'm a member of a domain now, and as well as the fact that we have Active Directory on our computer now. So if I close this, go to Start, Administrative Tools, come up here, you can see that I have Active Directory Tools. I also have DNS Tools as well, but I'm going to click on the Active Directory Users and Computers, and you're going to see that we are now members of or part of the Active Directory or our domain. And so if I expand this, you can see that my computer actually is a domain controller. SRV-1 is now the domain controller in our domain as well as our user, there is the administrative user. And this, in the next video, we're going to actually add, create users to this Active Directory domain.